The hot end on a King Room KP3S 3D printer has an interesting design, which unfortunately makes clogs very likely to happen. In this video, I'll show you why clogs happen. I'll give you three methods for removing them, and I'll also give you my best tips for how to prevent them happening again. My first hot end clog on my KP3S Pro happened on day one. I hadn't even started my first print and the filament became jammed. What I eventually found after stripping everything down is there is what I consider to be a design fault that leaves a void right in the middle of your hot end that can fill with filament. Once this void does fill up with filament and then it cools, I found no way to clear it without using one of these three methods. Firstly, try increasing your nozzle temperature up to 240 degrees. Then once the temperature has been reached, depress your extruder lever and try pushing the filament in. If it moves, then pull it out quickly, fully withdrawing the filament. If this works, then try reinserting some filament with a clean cut end and see if you can push it all the way through to the nozzle. If you can get the filament to extrude, then happy days, you're good to go. If the filament didn't budge or you couldn't get the new filament to push all the way through to the nozzle, then unfortunately you are gonna to have to take a few things apart. Cut the filament a few millimetres above the top of the extruder lever and then undo the three screws on the side of the fan cover. Unplug the stepper motor wiring and then move the whole fan cover out of the way whilst unclipping the hot end cooling fan. Now undo the three bolts holding the extruder cover on and remove it. Be careful that the spring on the extruder lever doesn't fly out as you do so and then carefully remove this spring with the adjuster. You should then be able to pull the hot end, plastic spacer and extruder lever forwards and out together. Once this assembly is out, you can separate the parts by sliding them off of the filament. Now put on a heatproof glove or be ready with something to insulate your hand from heat and take hold of the top of the hot end. Tell your printer to increase the nozzle temperature to 240 degrees and then wait for the target temperature to be reached. Be careful not to touch any part of this hot end assembly now as it's very much hot enough to burn you. Now try pulling on the filament and see if you can work it free. If not, hold your heat block still with an adjustable spanner and then undo and remove your nozzle. Try again to pull or push your filament to see if you can get it to move. Hopefully it will now pull free and you'll be able to skip ahead to the reassembly step. If not, and if you do have a heat gun, then use it to warm the top section of the heat sink until the filament does pull free. At some point the hot end will become hot enough for you to either pull the filament free or to be able to push the blockage through with a small tool like an Allen key. This method worked for me on one occasion, but if you're still unable to completely clear your blockage, then move on to the third method. What we're now going to do is remove the heat break from the heat sink. It's threaded, so you're going to need to be able to grip it so you can twist it, but without damaging the threads. I would suggest one of two methods for this. I've used both and they work. Either reinsert your nozzle and tighten it, or completely unscrew your heat break from the back of the heat block. Then after letting it cool a little, thread on two M6 nuts. Using two spanners, lock these two nuts together so that you can then unscrew the heat break from the heat sink. If you've chosen to use the first method of reattaching your nozzle, then hold the heat block still and unscrew the heat sink from it. Make sure you turn off the heat when you remove the heat block as there's no need to keep it hot for the next stage. With the heat break now removed, you should not only be able to see the blockage in your hot end, but you should be able to push it out, leaving your hot end completely clear. Reassemble your hot end in the reverse order of how you took it apart. And if you have any, put a little bit of thermal paste on the threads of your heat sink. This will help cool the upper section. With your heat break tight, undo the locking nuts and then reattach your heat block if you use this method. To make sure that you screw the heat break into the heat block the right amount, reinsert your nozzle, but then undo it around a full turn so that you can just see the threads. Then screw the heatsink into the back until it stops. You may want to wait until you've fully reassembled everything before final tightening your nozzle. Push the hot end back into position and then reinstall the plastic spacer with the curved section towards the back. First, just check that the PTFE lining is still in position inside. Slide the extruder lever back on and then reinstall the spring and adjuster before reinstalling the cover. Before attaching the fan cover, just check that your thermistor is in the right place. It shouldn't be protruding from the heat block as mine was when it was first delivered. Instead, it should sit right in the middle of the heat block to accurately measure the temperatures. Slide yours back if it's in the wrong place. Reattach your cooling fan and then the whole fan cover. Remember to plug the extruder stepper motor plug back in. You can now heat the nozzle and give it a final tighten. Remember to check your Z offset before printing as it may have changed. Now, before you click away, let's just quickly look at how to prevent clogs reoccurring. In my opinion, this void behind the heat break is a fundamental flaw in the design of the hot end, so replacing the whole unit would be the ultimate solution. However, I did manage to stop clogs without replacing any parts on my machine. I tried a number of different slicer settings, but unfortunately with Cura, I just couldn't stop the clogs from reoccurring every few prints. What actually stopped them was switching to using Prusa Slicer and then using profiles that were based off of profiles that King Rune sent me. I've linked these profiles below in the description if you want to try them. 
If you have any tips on how to avoid clogs, then leave them in the comments below for others to find. If you want to replace your hot end to remove the problem completely, then I plan on making a video guide showing how to do it shortly. Once it's done, it'll be up here, but hit subscribe and the notification bell if you want to be notified when it gets released. In the meantime, click here if you want to see another video relating to this 3D printer, or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.